grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This week is, of course, Reformation Sunday, and as Lutherans, we believe that not only did Luther get the ball rolling and start a good thing, we actually think that he hit the nail on the head. His teaching on the gospel and God's word, and and more importantly, Luther's commitment to the gospel and God's word, those are things that are still extremely relevant and, and so important for us today. Uh, I'm not a Lutheran by accident, and, and maybe you aren't either. What I mean is I firmly believe that this is the healthiest and most faithful interpretation of Scripture. Not just it happens to be right, but this is uh, really helpful, uh, and it's faithful to our Lord uh, with Luther's uh, understanding. Um, however, today's focus really is not on Reformation doctrine, but on Reformation action. Being Reformed or Lutheran means something for our life today. And I think that video did a, a great job of kind of introducing that topic. But first, it's important to start with some clarifications or to kind of slightly adjust one of Luther's favorite questions. What doesn't this mean? Well, first we want to make clear Martin Luther is not another version, not the Lutheran Pope, right? Because the Pope leaned on his own authority as the, the sole interpreter of the Bible and the vicar of Christ. But Luther said, really, who cares about me? Look at what the Word of God is clearly saying. And that's something that Luther was very, that was so foundational to Luther, was that he believed that the Word of God was saying something specific and uh, that you didn't need the Pope to interpret it, but all you need to do was understand, to pray, and study, certainly, uh, but you, it was something, the Bible was not obtuse. It wasn't something that, that you, know, you had to be a, a genius to understand. You just had to read it and study and pray, and you could understand what it was saying. Um, Luther was convinced, he called it the plain sense of Scripture. Um, now, it's important to clarify because people after Luther kind of took it a step further. Luther was not saying that anyone can interpret the Bible in any way that they want. No, that, what Luther was saying was anyone can interpret the Bible. Practically anyone with enough study, can understand what the Bible is trying to say. And it's saying specific things. Um, Luther didn't just want the clergy to read or understand God's Word. He wanted to, everyone to study God's Word. I find that really interesting from the video, pointing out that uh, the Reformation and this kind of sort of respect for individuals was what led to more compulsory education. Education not just for some people, but for all, including not just for men, but or boys, but for girls as well. Um, because And that was a pretty essential part of Luther's kind of development of his theology was uh, vocation, the fancy word, or kind of respect uh, for individuals and the variety of roles that we play together in, in, in making this world run and in loving uh, our neighbor as ourself. Also, it's important to remember um, Luther wanted the church to be unified. He didn't try to break away from the Roman Catholic Church. Remember, that's why it's called the Reformation. He wanted to reform it. And it was really only after almost two decades of futility or beating his head against a, a wall, you might say, a Roman wall, not to mention, of course, the Roman Catholic attacks on him and denunciations and making him a fugitive of the law and putting a price on his head. Finally, Luther admitted, I don't think they're compromised. I, I don't think they're coming around. Reformation of the Roman Catholic Church was not in the card, and so Luther felt like, well, we don't really have any option. Uh, we gotta, we got to create a true church. If the Roman Catholic Church is, refuses to do what the Word says, then we have no option but to do something separate. 
Luther, again, this is, uh, I think, a, a legitimate complaint that we have today because we have so many denominations. Luther, like many sincere Christians, perhaps you included, uh, bemoaned the fact that the church was fractured. But the difference is, is that many people would say, or were saying, or do say, why can't we just all get along? Luther would say it, why can't we all just listen to what God is clearly saying in his word? So that's what it doesn't mean to be a Lutheran. What does it mean to be a Lutheran? Well, we probably are of you for many of you, but we believe that it's in salvation by faith alone. We didn't earn it. We're not putting more on the good side than the bad side. No, it's, it's completely free, a gift of God because of his love for you. It's also only by uh, scripture alone. So again, we don't need tradition. We don't need um, a, a pope. Uh, we simply need to focus on God's word. And again, that doesn't mean you can just pick up the Bible necessarily and understand it perfectly without any study. Uh, no, it's saying something, and it helps to study. You understand it better when you understand a variety of other things and the context, but uh, that's how we get at it, not by listening to tradition, um, uh, rather by simply digging deeper into God's Word. And it's also uh, by, uh, by faith alone, by grace alone, um, so it's um, a gift of God's, and we receive it by simply accepting these promises and holding on to them. But, even as I say that, uh, it's not simply a, a thing of intellectual assent, like, oh, okay, I believe this to be true about the universe. No, uh, we trust in it. And as we grow in our trust, it just it starts to naturally flow over into our actions. Um, what else does it mean to be Lutheran? Well, if we're talking about practical things, it means that we are committed to confessing our sins, that we're looking to God to forgive us. Um, so we don't just do this once. Uh, we do it repeatedly, right? We do it pretty much every week at church, and uh, we do it throughout the week probably too, admitting our sins and asking God to forgive us. Um, we also believe that God's actually like God is coming down and doing something in baptism. He's making us his child. He's washing away our sins and giving us uh, an eternal promise that we can hold on to. We also believe that Jesus is sharing his very own body and blood with us through communion. <coughs> well, as the, Luther, as the video sort of uh, dove into a little bit, Luther's theology taught, and it's also important that Everyday life, everyday, ma everyday matters of life were, were equally as important as church things. In fact, as it was saying, the attitude before was like, oh, well, I guess this is a reality I've got to deal with. I've got to live in this world and I've got to take care of my family. But it really was not that important. It wasn't viewed as a, an important thing. It was just a chore that had to be done. But Luther looked at it from a whole different perspective. And perhaps, perhaps the best example of this change is Luther's attitude on diaper changes. Um, and Luther said, this is how a Christian man ought to think about changing diapers. This was not how Christian men were or maybe are thinking about changing diapers. But this is what Luther said. He said, you should be praying. You should be praising the Lord and saying, I confess to you, Lord, that I am not worthy to rock this little babe or to wash its diapers or to be entrusted with the care of the child and its mother. How is it that I, without any merit, have come to this distinction of being certain that I am serving your creature and your most precious will? Oh, how gladly will I do so, though the duty should be even more insignificant and despised, neither frost nor heat, neither drudgery nor labor will distress or dissuade me, for I am certain that it is thus pleasing in your sight. Right? That's, that's not our natural attitude towards changing dirty diapers. And I'm not sure about the, that post office mantra about delivering the mail, no matter, but it sounds to me like it's practically lifted from Luther's diaper statement here. Um, 
Trusting in God's word will dramatically change how we view the world, or at least it will dramatically change how you change diapers, right? Um, recognizing that we really deserve nothing, but that Christ gives us everything by his own suffering and merit changes our attitudes and our hearts. Um, it gives us, it changes us from a, a, a stinky attitude about life to an attitude of gratitude. What uh, originally motivated uh, Luther to speak out and to, to challenge the Roman Catholic Church was that his heart was breaking for people who were being tricked by a Ponte scheme instead of finding real salvation in Christ. Uh, this would eventually cause this monk to challenge the Pope, uh, to be kidnapped, to write the Bible in the vernacular, which was scandalous, and even more scandalous, to marry a nun and stir up all kinds of trouble. And not really because he was trying to, but because he felt like he had no other choice. Um, the, this, the Reformation, Luther was not just a writer. He was a man of action. Um, although he was a writer, he was a great, he wrote a crazy amount of stuff. In, um, but he, was, he didn't sit still. Uh, still today, the truth of the gospel saves. And it's more valuable than anything else. And it's that value of the gospel that, that motivated Luther. Um, I, I said this before, but I think it's not that Luther was a bad monk or a bad Roman Catholic, quite the opposite. It's that he took it so he took the he took it so seriously. And and because he was so earnest and took it so seriously, when he dove in, he realized this is this is this system that I am part of, that I have been so fully committed to, is not what the Word of God is teaching. And so then, you know, again, he's, it, it happens over time, and Luther becomes convicted and, and uh, dramatically uh, changes and challenges the world around him, even though uh, he doesn't really want to. Um, the message for today, however, is, is not that just we believe in Reformation principles, although I'm not trying to belittle those, um, because I think they're important, but but to focus on the fact that, that like Luther, when we really believe that this is true, that, that one, when we confess that we're sinners, and two, that we confess that nevertheless God forgives us and loves us, that really will not just be something we believe and leave church slightly feeling slightly better about life, but that it's going to change our whole lives if we let it. Um, the goal is to engage in Reformation action, right? Because the word reform, right, if you think of it, about it, it implies action. It implies doing something. It's not just, well, something slightly is wrong. If you want to reform something, you think that there's something seriously wrong and it needs to be rework reworked. And the first Reformation action can't be stressed enough, and that is that what needs to be reformed is me. That's, that's the central and, and first piece that must happen or all the rest is, is just not going to work out right. Um, but it's not just saying that, it's adopting that attitude. It's, it's saying, you know what, I'm a piece of work sometimes and so I need God to work on me to fix me. Don't, in other words, don't be shocked to find out that you've messed up. Shouldn't, shouldn't come as a real shocker to us, right? And don't try to cover it up. Don't try to deny it, rather confess it. Well, there's, there's more to it. That's the first vital piece, but there's more, I think. Luther did all kinds of stuff, as we were talking about, and he, and he was constantly thinking not only of his own welfare, but of the people around him, of, of the truth, of the church. Um, Luther, he never commanded an army or owed, owned tons and tons of stuff, although he had opportunities, uh, but he massively, nevertheless, transformed the landscape of the whole world. And he was a whirlwind of activity in writing. He, he pushed boundaries. Uh, he exploited all methods of communication, and, and he had the most scandalous marriage of the century. Uh, he was a man of action, but more importantly, he was a man of the gospel. And that's what we ought to be, as Christians, uh, a church of action, a church of the gospel. 
Luther was ready to do whatever it took to free the gospel. He was willing to pay any cost if only the world might truly hear of the saving work of Christ and of God's love and forgiveness through Jesus. Now, Luther had experienced and saw the world that was weighed down uh, by uh, the threat of, of damnation and of, of life that was hard, and he wanted people to receive the good news as good news. Uh, the good news of the gospel that naturally leads to transformation, or if we prefer, reformation. Um, Luther, but as Luther shows us, those real important changes are not always impressive to the world, right? So I'm talking about reform, and sometimes it's big, but sometimes it's what Luther was highlighting. It might be changing a diaper. Um, nevertheless, what, what matters is that even the little acts of love make a difference in the world around us. And sometimes it's the smallest actions that make the biggest difference in the world around us. The smallest actions are sometimes what give our Savior the biggest smiles. We remember that we are forgiven entirely free for the sake of Christ. And so now we go and live transformed by the saving grace of Christ our Lord. In Jesus' name.